Welcome to this basic tutorial series of Motiva Layama. We won't go into detail, but as you will notice, Layama is a software that is really simple to be used. So this will be more than enough to start creating your own scenes. In this case, we will use this simple Corona scene, but it will be done with V-Ray 2. And in the future, we will add support for other render engines. I will start by placing the cameras that define the points I will be able to navigate using Layama. To make this, I will go to the top view and just for convenience I will disable the target property to the camera. I am using the physical camera, but I could use a Corona or V-Ray camera. Also, that could give us an opportunity of using other features like using different exposure for each camera. So we will be able to move from dark to light areas or vice versa having a smooth transition between them. I will continue placing copies of the camera in the points I want to navigate using Layama, like this corner of the room. Probably we could be interested in moving near to the sofa. Another one here to go to the window area. Camera orientation doesn't matter. In example, I could rotate this point into the window and this won't have any effect at all. We only need to take care about the initial camera, I mean the one you will use as the start point on your web. Also, I will rename it to be identified easily in the export panel we will use later. Ok, let's place more cameras in our points of interest, like this one near the curtain and so on. Another thing we should highlight is that in Layama each camera could have a different height. In my opinion this camera is too low for this point of view, so I will move the camera a bit upwards. On the web, when we move from one point to the other, the camera will interpolate this height too, and this will look much nicer. We are back again in the top view and we will continue placing cameras. This one is really important. When we have different rooms, usually we will need to put one camera near to the door and this will allow the transition between both spaces. Layama only allows you to move from point to point. So if they have no direct visibility, you won't be able to move since you cannot go through the wall. The solution is simple. We need to add some intermediate cameras. In this case, I'll just add one in the corridor. This one will allow us to visit the kitchen, but also it will be a link with the other corridor and the rest of the apartment. To visit this kitchen properly, I think that three cameras could be enough. We will copy this one, but of course your cameras could be instances too. Also, I will check the camera height. It looks ok, but making a double check is always better. We will continue with the same process for the entire apartment, taking care of adding cameras on each room entrance. Once we are happy with our camera distribution, we will open the Layama panel. As you can see, it is a really straightforward tool with few options. It is really easy to use. We will use this control to add the wanted cameras. To make that, we will need to select them and click on the button. If we need to remove anyone, we need to select it in the control and click on delete. Once we already added the cameras, we can set the starting camera. Since we already named it, we can identify it easily, it's the one named initial camera. Concerning the size, it is referred to the vertical, so the final render will have 6 times this resolution in the width. For the initial test, I can recommend you to use 512. This will allow us to make a fast test and we will be able to check the navigation process. In addition to this, we can use low quality settings in our render engine. So we will get low quality renders, but we will be done quickly and we can be sure that our scene has been properly done for Layama. High quality is the ideal option for final renders. It will look great from mobile devices to computers. Meanwhile, medium quality will look ok in mobile devices and tablets, but a bit blurry in computers. Ultra has no many sense right now for us, but maybe a user could want to use it in the future. 
This control has a tooltip that details each option. Anyway, we will review each of them. Do nothing only writes the LYM file. This has not so many uses, only if you have rotated a camera or something like that. Full render makes all in a single click. It will perform all the renders in this workstation just by clicking on the Go button. Once it has been finished, it will open the Lyama application that allows us to export everything into a web. Prepare a scene for render will perform some changes on your scene to be rendered manually. Notice that the tooltip says that it will modify your scene, so you should keep a copy of your previous version. This option is pretty useful if you plan to render it on a render farm or you want to render it by chunks. If you only need to distribute the render using your own render farm, NetRender is your best bet. It will launch the render using Backburner. We will finish the tutorial with these two options. The first one allows to write the LYM file, and the second one we will run the Lyama application after the render. But notice that if we select it Network Render, it will be disabled, since we cannot know when it has been finished. So we will need to open the Lyama file manually. In the next video, we will cover how to use the Lyama application. Thank you for your time.